the premise of the show was that it, standard item fish out of water. Uh, Tim Reed uh, inherits this thing from his grandfather. Uh, he's teaching Renaissance art uh, at a college, M Middlebury or somewhere, I forget where I had him. He's a college professor. He comes down there and thinks, like a lot of us think, wouldn't it be cool to own a restaurant? I've had a lot of friends who have said that, a bar or a restaurant. Well, it is cool. It's also a nightmare, and I knew that. So that was that. It was about a guy coming in. It it's about a black man who didn't understand any of the black culture of New Orleans. And I should say up front, there's the South and there's New Orleans. And I knew this. That's two different deals, you know. New Orleans, New Orleans is New Orleans, you know. They got their whole, they got their own cooking down there. And so here comes Frank, this upwardly mobile, kind of, you know, well off, grounded black man, comes into this steamy environment that's got all these kind of gothic traditions and whatnot. That was my, my point. I just thought, and he'd be the eyes of the audience. He, I mean, because every show he'd be going, my, this is strange. Mm -hmm. And we hardly ever, we made no issue of race. Uh, he had a white lawyer, uh, which gave me a good, uh, who is a Jew, and people don't understand that they they were Portuguese Jews in Charleston, South Carolina before the revolution. Yeah, I, I had a friend uh, whose dad owned Cro uh, Jack Krawcheck. His dad owned the uh, uh, clothing store in Charleston, and he he was a Jew. He did he got bar mitzvah and all that, but he said schmuck. You know, so I thought, wow, now there's an interesting character nobody seems to know exists. So I, it's the most fun I've ever had in, in my life. And I think it's my best work. And the interesting thing behind all of this was that it, uh, a few people are aware of the, uh, the unintentional destructive consequences of integration. And that was that in New Orleans, there was white New Orleans with their famous street with the bars and their parade and all that. Well, there was an absolute mirror of all that going on a number of blocks away in the black community. And they had their restaurants and their hotels and their parade and all of that. Uh, when, when integration finally arrived and all that, what happened was that the black people went, you know, went to Mardi Gras here and, and used these hotels and these restaurants. And where Shea, Louisiana was, just black, black owned and operated businesses began collapsing all over the place. And his restaurant still survived. It, after the flood, the real owner of the restaurant. The restaurant was destroyed in the flood, and he went to, he evacuated himself to Atlanta, and while there died of a heart attack. So the restaurant was, it was called, I, I, I beg your pardon, it's called Chez Louisiane in my, in Frank's place. It's Chez Helene in real life. And it was a famous landmark, and it was one of the few owned and operated black businesses that survived the integration. I thought that was really interesting. So I kind of, I, I didn't want to say what year it was or anything else. We had shows that, uh, where uh, one of the young kids uh, was absolutely jumped upon and scolded by the older, his, his older black people because he is heard using the word nigger. And uh, that was a big point in the show. Well, it was about the same time that the most brilliant stand-up comic that ever lived was using that word in every other sentence. So you would look at us and say, gosh, when, 
what, what period of time am I? It was becoming fashionable. The N-word was used by, by blacks. Uh, it was never fashionable. It was used by, I grew up in the South. If I said that word, I'd get a spanking. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, it was, it, you know, we, I think we, we kind of had a retro feel to the thing. And I used a lot of smoke and, it's, and a lot of jazz and a lot of rhythm and blues. And I, uh, my, my wonderful makeup uh, person was constantly spritting everybody down and everybody kind of had a sheen of sweat on them and I always had a fan working in the background so I was very very interested in uh, atmosphere that is not of interest in sitcoms or who would fool with that <laughs>